Friends, I have a bit of trivia for you this morning. Three questions. Who was the actress who gave Elvis Presley his first screen kiss? It was in the movie King Creole, I think 1958. And what did that actress do five years later that shocked the world? And finally, where is she now? Anybody? No, okay. Well, I didn't know this either a week ago. Her name is Dolores Hart. And in the, in, the, uh, in the late 1950s, she was a rapidly rising movie star and Hollywood actress, acclaimed by many as the next Grace Kelly. She starred in at least 10 movies, including King Creole, Loving You, Where the Boys Are. How did she shock the world? She walked away from an exciting and lucrative career in Hollywood and on Broadway, broke off her engagement to her fiance, and became a religious sister in a Benedictine convent in Connecticut. Where is she now? At the Benedictine convent in Connecticut. You gotta wonder why, what was she thinking? A few years ago, People Magazine published an interview with her, and later she appeared on, as at the No Spin Zone, I think, with uh, Bill O'Reilly. She said it wasn't a bolt of lightning coming out of the blue, rather it was a slow dawning awareness that Jesus was calling her to a life of complete commitment to him. Clearly a seed was planted when at the age 10, with her parents' permission, she became a Catholic. She, she didn't come from a, a Catholic family, but she had been attending a Catholic school named St. Gregory's in Chicago. And she loved that experience. And she wanted to become a full-fledged member of this community of 10-year-old uh, kids and grammar school kids, a full-fledged member, and so she became a Catholic. And the seed began to sprout when, as a busy film star, she began to take time off to make informal retreats at that convent in Connecticut. In one of the interviews, someone asked her, what was it like to kiss Elvis Presley? <laughs> and she, she laughed and she said, in those days, a kiss on the screen could only last a couple of seconds. Well, that one has lasted for over 60 years. I like that story for a couple of reasons. First, it illustrates how Jesus still calls people to the religious life, to the priesthood, the diaconate, and to other special vocations, just as we see him doing here in this passage from the gospel, where he's calling here um, Simon and Andrew and James and John. But the story of Dolores Hart also shows how God often keeps knocking on the door until we are ready to say yes. The poster boy, of course, for people who are not ready to say yes is Jonah, who we meet in this first reading. The reading, this reading doesn't tell you this, but this is actually the second time God called Jonah. The first time God called Jonah to preach to the Ninevites, Jonah did a U-turn. Nineveh was maybe 50 or 60 miles to the east. So Jonah got on a boat and headed due west toward the Atlantic Ocean and went hundreds of miles. You know the story of how the ship ran into perilous weather and how the crew tossed Jonah overboard to calm the waves and how a whale swallowed him. Well, even the whale couldn't stomach Jonah and spat him up upon the beach. And then, and then God called him a second time and he had the good sense to say yes. One of my, I, I find it interesting uh, uh, these days to hear how people arrived at their decision in terms of religious life or the diaconate or the religious life. One of my former parochial vicars tells 
the story about his path to the priesthood. He, he grew up in a very devout, large Catholic family, went to Catholic schools, and from time to time he felt some inclination toward the priesthood, but he had other plans. He planned to become an attorney, and at one point he was in law school, I think it was in Cleveland, he met a girl. And they became quite fond of each other. And the girl introduced him to Eucharistic adoration. And so he began spending considerable time in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament. And there he discovered that God had been calling him. And like Jonah, he had the good sense to say, yes, I never found out what happened to that girl. Another young priest says he thought about the priesthood growing up, but not too seriously. He graduated from college and had a good job. And one day his father took him aside for a chat and said something like this, you know, Michael, that when I was a kid, my uncle was a priest and I've told you how much I liked him and admired him. I wanna tell you now that I see in you some of those same qualities that I admired so much in Uncle Bill. And then he went on to enumerate some of those traits. And then he said, you should think about becoming a priest. He said, I will, Dad. He is now a priest. What's the takeaway in all of this? What is the news you can use? Well, we learned from Sister Dolores that sometimes the call begins as a very faint whisper. And over time, it becomes clearer. We learned that when we spend time listening to God, as for example, in Eucharistic adoration, we can hear his voice more clearly. We learn from Jonah that when we say no to God's call, he continues to call. And Father Michael's story reminds us that parents are critically important in a person's choice of a life's work. So I urge you to think about a religious vocation for your children or grandchildren and encourage them to think about it and pray that their response might be the response that we encountered last week, Samuel, when he was sleeping in the temple. The third time was it that God called his name. He responded, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. May our young people do the same. Amen.